Atlantis ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready. WBNG TV, this is Houston. Please call Atlantis ISS for a voice check. Atlantis ISS, this is WBNG TV. How do you hear me? Uh, the ISS has you loud and clear. How us? Good afternoon, Atlantis. You know, the launch was a success. The docking was just so emotional for everyone here. How has this mission been so far? Uh, I got one word for you. Really busy. <laughs> Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've had a great time. We've got some great station hosts up here, and uh, we're just trying to get them all uh, stocked up for the next year. When you're up there, is it all work and no play, or do you get some downtime to enjoy yourselves on this final mission? Well, we haven't had much downtime yet, but we're working really hard to try and get ahead a bit. So when we get our half day off, we can actually take the day off and, and look out the window. The views from the cupola are truly spectacular, and that's probably where you'll find us on flight day eight when we have our time off. Are there any mementos that you plan to take home from this final mission? Uh, well, I think we we plan to bring more up um, and uh, then we do to bring back, uh, you know, uh, most of the things that are up here on station we're bringing up for a reason and they need them. But we all bring some personal mementos uh, on each shuttle flight and, uh, um, you know, we have them as souvenirs and for folks who have really worked hard for us uh, throughout the years. This next question is for pilot Doug Hurley. We are here in the southern tier of New York. You're a Tioga County native, graduate of Owego Free Academy. What does this area in the southern tier of New York mean to you? Well, it's it's my hometown. It'll always be my home. Uh, I, I get back there whenever I can and uh, just like to say hi to everybody back there. You know, this crew, you're really an inspiration to everywhere across the United States, but especially kids. What advice do you have for kids wanting to get into NASA and get in the field? Well, I think our advice would be just to uh, work really hard in school, especially in uh, science and math, because that's very, very important in, uh, in this business. And, uh, and then keep after your dreams. You never know. Uh, you know, I dreamed of uh, becoming uh, an astronaut a long time ago. I never really thought it was possible, but I kept after it. And, uh, and sure enough, we were able to. And I think a lot of us have those stories. It just takes a lot of persistence, a lot of hard work. So I've been listening over the last couple of days, and I really enjoy those morning songs with the wake-up call. Where do these come from, and how do you choose? I mean, you had Chumbawamba, you had Elton John, you had Coldplay. Tell me a little bit about that. Actually, normally our families pick out, uh, during a normal mission, our families will pick out our wake-up music for us, and some of it comes as a little bit of a surprise. This mission's a little special in that NASA arranged for several surprise wake-up songs from various different artists, and we're still waiting to hear what the rest of them are. But it's been really fun, you know, to wake up every morning to a different song, and it sort of sets the mood for the day. What do you plan to do when you get back? I know it's a couple days away and you're focused on your mission there right now, but any plans for when you actually touch ground here at home? What's the first things you want to do? Well, I think all of us uh, will probably savor the moment for a, a few minutes maybe, and then uh, I think all of us are really looking forward to getting outside and uh, kind of sharing it with all the, the great folks at Kennedy Space Center and then uh, a few hours later getting to see our family and friends. I, I think that's really what it's all about. Mr. Hurley, this question is again for you. You're the last pilot to shuttle these missions. What are your plans? Where do you go from here? 
Well, uh, my first priority is obviously to be uh, to com to complete this mission successfully and uh, help out everybody here on the ISS and my crewmates. And then once we get back on the ground, uh, spend a little time with family uh, and friends. And then from there, you know, we'll be working on uh, the next vehicle for NASA. We're going to help out our commercial partners. Uh, so there's a lot to look forward to. Uh, there's a bright future in space flight. So far, this final mission has been nothing but a success. Do you see the last 30 years of NASA being just that, a success? Yeah, um, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a fantastic world up here. And if I could convey one, uh, one message to you, it, it would be uh, when you stand poised about 600 feet underneath the International Space Station and look up and see that grand thing pass over you, it is really spectacular. Uh, you know, NASA's past 30 years of space shuttle, you know, when it's all done, we have the space station to show for it. We have uh, tremendous observatories in space. Uh, it's been a great program. Atlantis ISS, thank you so much from WBNG. Thank you from everyone in the southern tier. Keep up the great work and good luck with the rest of the mission. We'll see you later. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WBNG TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WICZ TV. Hello, how do you hear me? Uh, this is the International Space Station. We have you loud and clear. Hi, thanks so much. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing fine. How's it going down there in Binghamton? <laughs> it's doing pretty well. Not too cloudy for once. Well, first up, I have a question. Um, I have a few questions from some people in the area, and then I have my, my questions here. Um, first off, I want to know, and this is for everyone, you know, the four of you, how does it feel to be part of history, you know, being one of the few people to venture off um, into a space shuttle, you know? You know, we kind of we, we kind of don't think about it like that. This is sort of our normal job, and, and occasionally you just have to stop. And, and uh, I remember when I lived here on the space station, I got so much into the work and getting things done. Every now and then I had to stop and think about where I was. It's like, oh, my gosh, I'm floating in a, a big, huge building, you know, 200 miles above the Earth, and this is really special. And, and so, you know, when you're doing your day-to-day -day job, you can't really think about it in those kinds of terms. But all of us are honored to be a part of this mission and uh, we're doing our best to leave the station in a good configuration when we leave. And do you know what's, what's next for NASA at all? Will there be anything replacing the space shuttle? Uh, yes, we're uh, uh, very uh, hard at work on that right now. The, the uh, NASA is really looking forward trying to go to the next level. We, we're, right now the space shuttle comes here to the International Space Station and will continue to uh, to man the space station, continue to do research now that the space station is built. And uh, beyond that, our access to uh, space, we're going to try to get a vehicle that can go beyond low Earth orbit. And, uh, and we're going to turn over some of the, uh, the flights to the space station to, to taxi crew members back and forth to some of the commercial providers. So um, we're kind of tr trying to uh, transition to a more commercial approach for the low Earth orbit. But for the real true exploration beyond low Earth orbit, we're trying to uh, develop our own vehicle to do that. Oh, wow. And um, this question is actually for Doug. Um, this is from Corey um, out here in Binghamton, and he wants to know what inspired you to go to outer space? Well, I think it was uh, several things. It was, you know, college professors that uh, got you interested in a particular subject. It was uh, coaches that got you interested in being part of a team. It was, uh, you know, flying fighters and then being able to be a test pilot uh, you know so it was a number of different things that got me interested in. and it was also a, a love of uh, airplanes so a lot of different things led me uh, led me up here to the space station and this question is for anyone who wants to answer this is from Eli he's a little boy um, out here in Vestal and he wants to know where you guys sleep do you sleep in bunks on the floor or do you float
Uh, well, we actually sleep in, uh, we just sleep floating in space. We have sleeping bags that will unroll and will uh, usually stretch uh, along a wall or uh, on the ceiling, perhaps. But uh, we'll just stretch them between two locations, pull them taut, and uh, you climb into your sleeping bag and you sleep like that. It's very comfortable. It's a great place to sleep. And uh, a little girl named Mira wants to know if training is hard to be an astronaut. You know, training is, is not really hard. It's a lot like being in school. You have a lot of different things to study, and then, you know, when we go on a mission, it's kind of like our open book test because we have to demonstrate that we learned everything that we we're supposed to learn. But it's a lot of fun, too, because you get to learn different things every day. Just like you change different subjects in your classes at school, we change subjects all the time, so we're learning a vast array of new things, and it's fun to do that. And Samantha wants to know, what kind of food do you guys eat up there? I know that you'll be having a big feast, um, you know, with the public, NASA's planning. So um, I guess tell me what that's going to be like and on a regular basis what kind of food you guys will be eating. Well, we have a lot of different kinds of food we can eat. Um, we can uh, we can have like uh, normal stuff that's uh, kind of like the army would eat. You kind of uh, heat it up and eat it. Like uh, today, I had tuna noodle casserole. We have other stuff that's dehydrated, kind of like camping food. We have some shrimp cocktail that's pretty popular uh, around here that we like to eat too. So um, we have a, a lot of different variety, and the food is good. It's it's come a long ways, and uh, and it's fun to taste different types of things we have to eat here. And what's the first thing? Um you guys plan to do when you come back to Earth? Well, uh, I think we all wouldn't mind taking a shower uh, <laughs> once we get back to crew quarters there at Kennedy Space Center. But, uh, you know, our biggest thing is just to, to make sure that we get to share it with all the great folks down at Kennedy Space Center and uh, thank them for their 30 years of work on this uh, awesome space shuttle vehicle that we got to fly. All right, thank you guys so much. Good luck with the rest of your mission, and we're all proud of you down here. Well, thanks a lot, and i uh, just like to say hi to all my family and friends back in Binghamton. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WICZ-TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KGO-TV. Definitely. Roll. Atlantis ISS, this is KGO TV. How do you hear me? Hello, KGO TV. This is the International Space Station. How do you copy us? You sound fantastic. Uh, Commander Ferguson, if I could start with you, uh, I guess uh, today would be, oh, the glory of being an astronaut. You get to move stuff into the uh, International Space Station and, and drag the garbage out. Uh, not the most glorious day, but the work that has to be done. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, you pretty much hit the nail on the head there. That is exactly what we're doing. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of a lot of stuff we need to supply this International Space Station with to sustain them for about a year. So uh, a lot of it's food, a lot of it's clothing, a lot of it is spare parts. And uh, hauling out in the uh, in the other direction, I wouldn't call it garbage. It's it's mostly broken things. It's things that need to go back to the ground. They want to take a look at it. They want to know why it failed, so they can make make it better the next time they send it up. All right, Specialist Magnus, I'd like to ask you a question. How are you and how are the others from your observation uh, reacting to uh, this being the last shuttle? mission, what are the emotions as you look about knowing that it's not going to happen again? Well, you know, that's something we've been dealing with, the whole training flow. We've we've had a lot of last events, you know, last training event in the motion-based simulator, the last training event in Building 9 where our full-scale mock-ups are, the last interaction with some of uh, the great people at Kennedy Space Center. And as we've gotten closer and closer to launch, it, it it's hitting a, it hit us more and more powerfully that this really was it and i think uh after we get back down to the ground after landing it's going to hit us really hard and i think we're all going to have a really hard time leaving the shuttle and doing the walk around and greeting the people down there and and just closing out the program that way i mean we'll be really excited that the hopefully the mission went well but we'll be very sad too because it was a it's a great program 
Uh, Pilot Hurley, a, a question for you, if I could. Uh, America is watching this space shuttle mission more intensely than any in years, many years. Uh, is, is the historic aspect of this mission on your minds? How do you go about your day with that present? Uh, to be real honest with you, I don't think it is. We, uh, you know, I think most of us, our whole lives have been very focused and goal oriented. And uh, this is just one more of those things that we're doing. You know, we're so focused on the task you're doing that particular minute or that particular hour. And then, you know, task after task and, uh, you know, EVA that we did yesterday and transfer that we're doing today, you know, it keeps us so focused that we, we tend not to, I think, look at the big picture as much and I and I think we're kind of all telling ourselves that you know we'll have time to kind of reflect on this uh, this whole event this whole happening that we that we've gone through for the last nine months uh, and, and hopefully be able to share it and articulate it with everybody else and finally for specialist Walheim if I could uh, the local boy who made so good uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, with that last spacewalk yesterday, you're, you're someone who has done several of those. Uh, as that was going on, last one with the shuttle, uh, your thoughts and your emotions. Well, it was a, it was a, uh, a wonderful sight. It was a, it was a pleasure to be a part of it, and it was kind of unique for me because I've been outside on spacewalks for five times, but it's been about nine years since I've been inside while the spacewalk is going on. So when those guys come right up to the window in the spacesuit, it's just a real uh, sci-fi type of look, and it was uh, it was very interesting, and it was a, it was a lot of hard work, and I was really proud of the uh, the spacewalkers, Ron Garen and Mike Foss, and they did an awesome job, got all their tasks done, even got a bonus one done. Um, and another one for you, uh, Specialist Walheim, uh, now that there are going to be no more shuttles to fly, uh, what becomes of someone who was uh, known for his uh, flying on the shuttles? What are you going to be doing next? What's up for you? Well, for me, I just want to continue to be involved in, uh, in the program at NASA. We've got uh, the continuing operations here on the space station. The space station is now complete. Uh, we can end the, the assembly phase, and now we're entering the, uh, the utilization phase where we can do that groundbreaking research to find uh, new ways to treat diseases, find out new ways to help us to be able to stay in space longer, our human body. And then we're also going to try to go beyond low Earth orbit. So I think that's really exciting, building a new system to, to get past uh, the, the, uh, the space station's altitude up to, uh, you know, the... the the altitude of the moon or to uh, an asteroid or maybe to Mars one day. And so we've got to build those systems, and I want to be involved in helping to build those. Well, we only have a, maybe 20 seconds for your answer, and I, I hope that's fair. But I was wondering if you could say to young people who still think about going into space, we're talking about Mars, we're talking about meteors, what is it, what gives you the most excitement when you are up there or going up there? Where is that, that major rush? Well, that, I would have to give that two things. Number one is launch. Anytime you get slung off the planet from zero to 17,000 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes, you can't help but get in an adrenaline rush, and that is absolutely spectacular. And then when you get up here, just looking back on the Earth, uh, 220 miles down, and uh, a couple days ago I had a chance to uh, see California from space again, and uh, I could see the Bay Area. It was a little bit foggy, but uh, I could see the outline of it, and uh, to think I was a kid uh, down there uh, many years ago looking up at the airplanes and dreaming of flying one day, and here I am on the International Space Station and cruising along at Mach 25. It's just amazing. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. It's, uh, it really is dreams do come true with a little bit of persistence and some hard work. All right. To all of you, thank you so much. America's watching, and uh, look forward to seeing you back here next week. Yeah, we, we appreciate that, and uh, I just wanted to say hi to all my, uh, my friends and, and, uh, and, and folks I know and my relatives in the Bay Area. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, WBNG-TV, WICZ-TV, and KGO-TV. Atlantis ISS, we are now resuming operational audio comms.